Hello, busy dads and busy people everywhere. A number of you have recently asked me to share some more of the details of my cold water practice. And so in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now bear with me while I get into the ice bath because I thought there will be no better setting for this video than in the bath itself. So we're gonna put our feet in. And all we're trying to do at this point before we sit down is make sure that our breathing stays controlled, really focusing on the exhale. What I'm gonna do is as I exhale slowly, I'm gonna sit into the ice bath. And here we are. So, in this video, I'm gonna answer a bunch of different questions about my ice bath practice. I'm gonna talk about when in the day I get in the bath, how often I'm getting in, what I'm doing while I'm inside, and then the practices I've developed afterwards. As I wanna go into, for me, as much of my cold water practice happens outside of the water as it does inside, and I'll talk to you about that in due course. So first of all, I make an effort when I can to get into the bath before I train on the training day, and uh, generally pretty soon after I wake up. I had been going in while my daughter was getting ready for school, but I didn't like the way that that was panning out. Felt like uh, it was a little bit unfair on her. That's usually quality time that we get together in the morning. And so I tend to go after I've dropped her off from school. So I'll get home, drop her off, uh, warm myself back up a little bit and then train. That's in an ideal world. If it's a choice between not going in at all and going in after I've trained, then every time I'm going in after I've trained. <sighs> There's some evidence that if you're a full-time bodybuilder and you're really concerned about hypertrophy, it might not be such a good idea to get into the bath straight after your training. But it really only has a pretty minimal effect on hypertrophy in any way. For most of us here on the Busy Dead program, that's really not our main goal anyway. And so I've got no issue at all with going in after my training and it feels really good. So a number of you have asked me how often I'm going in and the answer to that is, assuming that I'm well, I don't like to go in if I'm unwell, but assuming that I'm physically fit and able, I'm gonna try and get in every day. But as a backup, my baseline that I'm looking for in any given week is 11 minutes cumulative ice bath time over the course of a given week. Now, typically my sessions in the ice bath are between three and five minutes. My buy-in is three minutes, sometimes I'll go to five, I can go beyond that, but I found that it's not necessary to get the real benefits. Now, the way that I built up the practice was I, I started getting in the ice bath long before there was any ice forming, way back in late fall. And as the weather got colder, I was able to acclimate. And so I found that from the very beginning, I was able to go in for those longer periods, mainly because the water wasn't that cold to begin with. But if you're jumping straight into cold water, you might be able to jump in straight in for that three minute threshold, but if you're not able to, that's absolutely fine. My advice, this is the same advice I give to people with their pull-up practice, is just work up in slow increments until you get to that three minute threshold. Put five or 10 seconds on each session and just build your way back, build your way up. Now, those sessions themselves have some internal structure. So I'm not gonna be doing that in, in this video, but typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into the bath, and as you saw, I'm gonna focus on my breathing. I'm using my breathing to try and calm myself. The body wants to go into panic mode and I'm not letting it. And the way I'm preventing that from happening is by really focusing on my exhale, keeping the exhale very slow and controlled. And once I'm in the bath, after a couple of deep breaths, I'm gonna get my head under just briefly 
just at the beginning to acclimate. And then I'm going to focus on slow, calm breaths until I get to the one minute mark. I've got my stopwatch on, I'm taking a glance at the stopwatch. Now for that first period, my hands are not in the ice bath. I'm in up to my neck, but my hands are outside. But when that first minute comes around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hands in and I'm going to deliberately move my body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my right elbow down to my left knee with my hands under, then my left elbow over to my right knee, a bit like you see people doing, some people when they're doing burpees after a rep. I'm going to do seven reps on each side. It's going to take about 15 seconds. And then I'm going to go back to my steady breathing. And when the two minute mark comes around, I'm going to do another set. Now on a three minute day, I'm just going to hold out until three minutes around and then I'm going to stop. On a five minute day, I'll repeat that at the three minute mark. And then when the four minute mark comes around, I really control my breathing and I'm going to do 20 reps on each side. That's going to take me about 50 seconds. Then I'm going to just stay calm for the next 10 seconds and get out. Now, I tend to find that there's a tendency to panic at that point that it's time to get out, a kind of get out mode. So I'm really focusing on my breathing at this point. And I'm going to calmly, very calmly, stand up. Okay, I'm going to get out. And the first thing I'm going to do is just dry myself off a little bit. I'm wearing a pair of sandals and I walk back inside and then I'm going to begin the process of warming myself back up. So I'm going to meet you guys inside and I'm going to talk to you about what that looks like. I'll see you in one second. Okay, my friends, so I'm back inside my house now. I've done my five minutes. And this is really the time where, for me, the hardest part begins. Once you're in the water, I find it's, it's really not too much of a problem to stay in there. But where you will find a panic mode that begins to set in is when you get out of the water and it's time to warm your body back up. It's so important to me to resist the urge, which can be very strong, to get into the hot shower and try and warm myself up artificially. It's also important to me to, with, to resist the, the temptation to wrap up warm in thick down coats, to put on a hat. I really, really want to warm myself up using my own inner resources. It's very important to me. A lot of the metabolic benefits come from warming yourself up naturally. And there's a real feeling of accomplishment if you do that. Not only is there a feeling of accomplishment, but I found that there was an incredible rush that you get in the kind of half an hour to an hour after you, after you get out of the ice bath. A tingling that you feel all over your body that's really pleasurable. A sense of energy and vigour and excitement. But that if you short circuit the process of warming up, that feeling, although it's still there, it's really dampened. And so it's really important to me to warm myself back up. And when I first started the practice, that was where I went, that was where I fell short. A lot of the time, I found myself really panicking when I got out and I would run into the hot shower to try and short circuit the warming up process. But I've learned some protocols that have helped me to warm myself back up that I wanted to share with you. Really, there were three things that I've learned. The first thing I've learned is that some shivering is inevitable and not to be resisted. Shivering is actually really, really good. It's a sign that your body is responding in the way that it should. There is nothing wrong with a little bit of shivering. And so not running away from shivering, not freaking out if you start to shiver, that's really helped me a lot. However, it's one thing to shiver, it's another thing to lose control and to start kind of jackknifing, and we don't want that to happen. And what I've learned is that one of the things that really helps you to avoid shivering in that uncontrollable way is to keep your breathing calm and to stop yourself from kind of tensing up. You don't want to fight the shiver. You don't want to tense your core and really push against it. That will intensify it, I've found. Instead, you want to keep your breathing quite steady and quite calm and you don't want to tense up. The next thing that I've learned um, that's been incredibly helpful is that you've got to move. You've got to move if you want to get some heat back into your body. 
And so what I tend to do is when I get out of the shower, I'll come inside my house and I will do a hundred squats, body weight squats. Okay, and as I go down into the squat, I'm kind of, I'm really trying to use my whole body. And so I'm kind of crossing my arms at the bottom, pulling them out of the top. I'm really trying to get the blood flow into my body. And what I find is that on a really cold day, my extremities, my hands and my feet are like blocks of ice. I can barely feel them at the first squat. And by the hundredth squat, I've got all the feeling back. My body has changed colour. It's no longer bright red. And I'm really, really breaking the back of the drying off process. At that point, I will meticulously dry my body um, and get into my training clothes. Or if this is not a training day, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool off. So I'm going to finish those squats and then I'm going to get under the cold shower and I'm not going to stay under there long. I'm going to drench my body in a bit of, bit of cold water, really wash off with the cold water off, put it on again and then dry off, get my clothes on and keep this moving around, keep moving around. At that point I might myself, make myself a hot drink and it takes about 15 minutes for me to be back where I want to be in. After that 15 minutes has elapsed, like I said, my whole body is tingling, I'm feeling amazing, I'm feeling full of vitality, and I'm ready to push forward with my day. So my friends, that's my cold water practice. Like I said, looking for 11 minutes per week at a minimum, but typically I'm going in there for three to five minutes each day, and then I'm going through that process to warm, my, warm myself back up. And I would say that it is the single most effective intervention I've made in my life since I started training burpees. I strongly recommend all of you to explore this. It's a really, really wonderful practice. Speak again soon.